So the Fear and Hunger games are made in RPG Maker. Uh, and if you have RPG Maker, you can open the games and easily view like all of the images and files and code to learn things about how the game works. To my knowledge, there actually isn't a guide on this yet, so I wanted to make one myself. The first thing you're going to need to do is decrypt the files, and I'll show you why. If we open the first game, which I've downloaded a encrypted version of again, uh, you'll see it looks like this. And so this is supposed to be, we have maps down here, this is level 4A, this is supposed to be the caverns, but uh, we can't, it's just a, a big, <laughs> big checkerboard. Um, and this is important because a lot of the code is stored in the map, so like, I mean that one isn't, uh, but it, you know, we, if we try to find anything like Pocket Cats here somewhere, we could read Pocket Cat's dialogue if we could find him. But because it's it's a bunch of squares, uh, here it is, I think. Okay, we did eventually find him, but it's going to be a much harder time, and you're not going to be able to see anything if you wanted to like look at the sprites. So here you can download an RPG Maker decryptor, uh, Windows or Linux. Then once you've downloaded it and unpacked that, you'll have this uh, folder. Open the program. And then select the game directory. So, like, just the Fear and Hunger folder, or the Fear and Hunger 2 Termina folder. If you have it on Steam, it'll be a path like, it'll be something like this. Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Fear and Hunger. Uh, you don't need to go into www if you're just decrypting it. It's where the exec ex executable file is. Uh, if you got it off of, like, itch.io, then, you know, it'll be wherever you put it. If it's Steam, it'll probably be Steam, Steam Apps, Common. And then you're gonna have to wait a while as it slowly decrypts the images. You can see it's decrypted these already. You can actually watch them as they're being decrypted. Here we have a bunch of RPG MVP uh, files, which we can't see, but it's turning them into PNGs. And we'll have a little pop-up when it's finally done. So now all the images are decrypted, and you can use this to just look at the images on, you know, as a file on their own if you want. Like you want to see what Kahara looks like when he's missing both legs. There it is. <laughs> so to open it, you need to have RPG Maker MV. Uh, you can get it here. There's a 20-day trial of it. Afterwards, it's a bit expensive if you're just trying to look at files, so I'd uh, recommend just making really good use of that 20-day free trial. And then once you open up, you'll have a screen like this, though the project won't be open yet. You'll have to open the project. And that'll be at the same location as before, Steam Apps, Common Fear and Hunger. But then you go into www and select this game file. And then it'll open, it'll look like this. I don't know why this is the default map whenever I open it. It opens to this. So now you can go ahead and look at all the different maps. And as I said, a lot of the code is stored in the maps, even like... There's a bunch of stuff stored like off of the map, like hidden, like a uh, fear floor. <laughs> I don't know what that is. There's a lot of, uh, you know, stuff I don't understand. A bunch of animations are stored up here. I think the bear traps are stored here too. Yeah, bear traps are stored up here. You know, Crowmaller's hiding off map at all times if you want to see the code for that. Uh, it's actually next to him, you've got the crow controller. Looking at where something happens will typically tell you most of what there is to know about it. So like, here's a ritual circle, it's got code for the blood portal, and sacrifices, uh, and some other things I can't show. Understanding this kind of stuff requires like some basic knowledge of programming, but it's nothing too complicated. Uh, at least most of it isn't. Like, oh, here's control a variable between 1 and 10. If it hits 1, then it uh, activates the next phase, and then it checks again, and then it spawned in one of two locations. Okay. It seems simple enough. But there's also some stuff stored uh, outside of the maps, mainly in database here. Go to tools and database. Find the actors. These are the playable characters. There's not much here. Classes, again, is information about playable characters, which you don't have much. And then skills is every skill in the game, both the player characters and the enemy skills. So, like, if you want to see um, what the insect armor ability does, I don't know where that one's from, the red man reaches for you. You can see this one event. It'll trigger a common event, guard, break, neck, apparently. Or herding, the yellow mage attack legs can cut off your legs or your arm. You can use either herding. And so if you want to know more about those, you go to the enemy page. 
and then you can see all of the enemies and each body part is defined as a different enemy. So you can look at like the yellow mage and you can see, I, I believe the max HP is misleading, there's typically um, other stuff going on that lowers it, and that max HP is just used for like damage over time effects. Like the head, 20, okay, the arm has these actions, okay, it has Locust Swarm, which is skill 49, so we can go look at the skills, scroll to skill 49, and see Locust Swarm. Okay, so this is what it does, it has uh, this success chance will deal 10 damage plus or minus 20%, has an 80% chance of confusing you. All right, then you can also see all the items, you know, their description, some kind of, some of their effects. So like, we can look at this, it'll have effects like add state, food large, and common event, food large, we can look at the common events. Not sure where food large is, I should have checked. We can, uh, yeah, if we edit it, we can see common event 33, food large, okay. So common events are just any kind of frequently used thing that isn't stored in every map. It's mainly, you know, eating food, or hunger, blindness. The event will change the experience of characters, which is what's used to, tr to track hunger. It's a little bit weird. Weapons, you know, attack element, uh, state, rate. Oh, well, the short sword has a chance to cause bleeding. Is that true? According to this. Huh, I've never noticed that, but... Okay, interesting. They all have a 10% chance of bleeding. Huh. Yeah, there's not too much interesting to the weapons or to the armors. I mean, you can check their resistance rates. Uh, you may know the defense stat itself doesn't actually do anything. It's just vaguely an indication of what resistances you'll get. And then troops are like how the enemies are spawned. So like, you know, uh, this priest is in one, one troop and then these two priests together are in one troop and there's a lot of code about like what will happen when you defeat them, what will happen when you are defeated, uh, what will happen, or this is what will happen if you're defeated, this is if you lose an arm then you lose the infection. Unlikely to happen in this battle but that's probably just pasted into every battle. Uh, this is if you use like counter magic I guess. You can talk to them, that's where you can see all the talk commands. You know, you see anything about the different battles. And states are various status effects, as well as some more complicated stuff, like these states are used in the common event for food to see how much you ate. There's, you know, enemy status effects and animations. You know, you can probably imagine what's kept in the animation category. Tile sets, you know, so tile sets. I think that's simple enough. Common events I mentioned. It's just anything that might need to be triggered from anywhere. Not actually sure what system is. <laughs> there's probably something in there. You just have the damage types, not like there's much you need to see here. And, you know, the HP is called body, MP is called mind. The other thing I've used so far is this event searcher up here in tools, where you can search for, like, triggers used by certain events. So as a very boring example. Uh, you might see this bookshelf, control switch number 120 bookshelf 9 equals on. And if it's on, then it, okay, it'll already search that bookshelf. Okay, well, so we can search. Does it do anything else? So we can go and search for 120 right here, bookshelf 9, okay. Uh, and then we can search. And we'll search all of the events for this. So in this case, it's just used a few times on, on these different maps, and you can look at these positions. So like, we're on level 1A, so we can see it used at 32.51 and 31.51. Well, the, the places we already saw it, but, you know, you can just do that with any trigger you find somewhere to help you figure out, like, where is this used? Um, like, I could look at more interesting examples in Termina. So for an example of something I looked at recently, uh, when does Karen sit on the beach here? Uh, so it needs to be day three dusk, we can guess how that would be used. But, oh, Karen to beach, 4707, okay, let's search for that one. And here it is, Karen to beach. Search. And we see it's only triggered by one event, event 303 in common events. Days go by too fast. In Termina, that's a huge event that manages all of the like time passing stuff. 
Uh, so it's got a lot of people moving, so it can be very complicated to figure out exactly how uh, this goes on, but if we wanted to see what triggers Karen going to, going to that beach, we'd want to go here. I think I forgot to mention the way I look at these tiles is right-clicking, then clicking edit. And you can see this. You can also uh, press enter. So like you can use arrow keys to move the selection, and enter to select something and then escape to unselect it. You can make it faster to search through a lot of things at once, if that's what you're trying to do. So that's a simple guide on how to open Fear and Hunger in RPG Maker and just take a look around at like basic code or something. Uh, and that's you know, I think that's enough information to like find most things in the game. Sometimes it'll be complicated when you're looking between a bunch of different categories of things, but that's enough to find most information that you'll need, at least in my experience so far.